Hello and welcome back to my channel where we tackle some of the toughest math problems. Today I've got a tricky trigonometric identity to prove, one that can give a lot of people trouble. But fear not, because in this video I'm going to break it down step by step and show you exactly how to prove it. So get your pen and paper ready and let's dive in. What do we have? We have tan of pi over 9 squared plus tan of 4 pi over 9, 9 squared plus tan of 7 pi over 9 squared equals 33. Obviously, we are supposed to uh, prove this identity. How can I uh, start with this problem? You guys probably know the tan of pi over 3 equals squared root of 3. And here I have tan of pi over 9, which can, yeah, which you could say has some sort of relationship bit with pi over 3 in that um, basically uh, pi over 3 is 3 times pi over 9. So maybe if I consider this identity, this famous identity of tan of 3 alpha, and write the uh, expression for it, maybe I can derive some relationships uh, which can help me prove this identity. You guys remember this uh, identity? Well, I personally don't remember it, but that's not a problem because I can simply prove it. So I take this for granted that you guys know that tan of alpha plus beta equals, I memorized actually, I have memorized this identity that is uh, tan of alpha plus tan of beta divided by 1 minus tan of, um, well, let's just write tan this way, T G. That's kind of easy, easier for me. So this is tan of alpha times tan of um, beta. So from this, I get tan of 2 alpha. You just put beta equals alpha, then you get 2 tan of alpha divided by 1 minus um, 10 squared of alpha. And it's not difficult to derive 10 of 3 alpha because then I have basically 10 of 3 alpha is 10 of alpha uh, plus 2 alpha and that is nothing using this identity here. And the fact that I have 10 of 2 alpha that is 10 of alpha plus 10 of 2 alpha divided by um, 1 minus 10 of alpha times 10 of 2 alpha. So I'm going to just substitute 10 of 2 alpha from this uh, identity here and let's see what we get. So that is 10 of alpha plus 2 10 of alpha divided by 1 minus 10 squared of alpha. Here divided by, I have 1 um, minus 10 of alpha times 2 tan of alpha divided by 1 minus 10 squared of alpha. So if I multiply both numerator and denominator by 1 minus 10 squared of alpha, this guy here, then what do I get? This is equals, uh, equal to 10 alpha minus 10 3 of alpha plus 2 tan of alpha divided by um, here I get 1 minus 10 squared of alpha minus 2 10 um, squared of alpha. So in other words, I can uh, say that I have this relationship for uh, 10 3 of alpha. And that is this guy. 10 3 of alpha equals uh, 3 10 of alpha minus 10 3 or 10 to the power of 3 of alpha divided by, by 1 minus 3, 10, 2 of alpha. Beautiful. Okay, so that's not the end. Let's just not put that there. So what can I do with this identity? I already told you that if I take alpha to be pi over 9, on the left I have 10 of 3 pi over 9, which is 10 of pi over 3, and 10 of pi over 3 is already known. It's a squared root of 3. So let us consider this 
equation. The square root of 3 equals 3. Well, I'm going to put x equals tan of alpha, and then I get 3x minus x to the power of 3 divided by 1 minus x2, 3x2. Why did I do that? Because, see, guys, if I already put pi over 9 in that equation, this doesn't help me with this identity here. Here I have a square root of some of these tens, and here I have the power 3 of uh, tangent of pi over 9, and that's just not going to help me. So I thought I will put x equals um, tan of alpha, and then this is a cubic equation. Maybe I can find some uh, relationships based on the roots of this cubic equation. If I just simplify this um, cubic equation, I get uh, square root of 3 minus 3 square root of 3x um, squared equals 3x minus uh, x3, or if I simplify it further, I get um, x3 minus 3 squared root of um, 3x2 minus 3x plus the square root of 3 equals to uh, 0. So you know that in a cubic equation, assuming that I have, uh, let's say, uh, 3 roots, x1, x2, and x3, I can derive some relationships between those roots because this can generally be uh, factorized as x minus x1 times x minus x2 uh, times x minus x3 um, is equal to 0. And if I just expand this expression, then I get uh, from the first two, I get x2 um, minus um, x1 plus x2 times uh, x plus x1, x2 times um, x minus x3 uh, is equal to 0. And then again, I expand this, then I get x3 here, the first term, and then minus x, uh, well, it becomes something like, uh, yeah, minus, let's just write it. So um, minus x3, x2, and here the first one is minus x1 plus x2, x2 plus um, uh, x1 plus x2 uh, times x3 times x and plus x1, x2, x uh, minus x1, x2, x3. Okay, that is equal to zero. And then again, simplify this guy. Here I have x2, here I have x2. Then I get minus x1 plus x2 plus x3, x2, and then um, the x factors are here basically. Then that is um, x1, x2 plus x1, x3 um, plus x2, x3, uh, x minus x1, x2, x3 equals to 0. Basically, if I um, compare this guy here with this guy up here, then I can derive some relationships that the co coefficient of x squared, basically they have to be equal. So it means x1 plus x2 plus x3 uh, should be equal to this guy, 3 times uh, square root of 3. And this guy here, the coefficient of x, which is basically x1, x2, plus x1, x3, plus x2, x3, should be equal to coefficient of x, which is minus 3. And also x1, x2, x3 should be um, equal to minus square root of 3. Okay. How did I come by all of these relationships? So if, if you go back here, so you remember here I assume tan of 3 alpha is equal to squared root of 3, right? So in other words, I had this relationship here. I had uh, tan of 3 alpha is equal to squared root of 3. But this is a yeah typical trigonometric equation, and from this I can derive that uh, 3 alpha is equal to Q 
kp plus uh, pi over 3, where basically k belongs to integer numbers. Or in other words, I can say alpha is equal to kp over 3 plus pi over 9. Obviously, one of the answers to this uh, trigonometric I equation was pi over 9. We also said that because we were interested in kind of generating um, an expression based on tan of pi over 9. That's how we started all of this. But there are more answers to this um, trigonometric equation than just pi over 9, depending on what you take for k. And it turns out there are three unique answers. So one is basically when you get, um, when you take uh, k equals 0, so you have alpha 1 uh, is equal to pi over 9 for k uh, 0, and then you have alpha 2 um, equals well, just put uh, k equal, uh, equals 1, and then you get pi over 3 plus pi over 9, which is 4 pi over 9 for k equal 1. And then you also get another one, um, which is alpha 3 is equal to 2 pi over 3 plus pi over 9, which is... Um, 7 pi over 9 for k equals 2, right? So I have three answers for alpha. But you remember that actually I took x equals uh, tan of alpha. That's how I derived the cubic equation. So it means I have three answers for that cubic equation, which are basically determined by the answers for that trigonometric identity as well. So I already have x1 and x2 and x3. I also already have the relationship between them. So I have x1 equals um, tan of alpha 1, which is basically tan of pi over 9. Then I have also x2 equals tan of pi over 2, which is tan of uh, 4 pi over 9. And then I have also x3 equals tan of 7 pi over 9. So beautiful. I have these three answers to that uh, tough cubic uh, equation here. And also I have the relationships between them uh, here, these beautiful relationships. So now all I need to do is to form the expression which I had in the beginning. I go back there. So you remember here I had the, the sum of the squared, no sorry, the sum of um, power 2 values of these 10 complex tan, uh, tangents. And I'm going to form that expression here for you guys. So that is nothing but basically this guy, x1 to the power of 2 plus x2 to the power of 2 plus x3 to the power of 2, because x1 and x2 and x3 are precisely those tangent um, formulas. But I can also use some algebraic techniques such as this guy, x1 plus x2 plus x3 to the power of 2, minus 2 times x1, x2 plus x1, x3 um, plus x2, x3, right? So, but do we have some relationships for these guys? You remember here, I derived these relationships based on the coefficients of the cubic equation. So the first one is 3, uh, times the square root of 3, and the second one is minus 3. So I'm going to just use them here. So then I get uh, 3 squared root of 3 to the power of 2 minus 2 times, again, I forgot it, um, squared root of 3. Right? If Let me just be sure, sorry. No, minus 3. I'm sorry. I was about to make a mistake. That is minus 3. And the first one would be 9 times 3 is 27 plus 6 and that is 33. In other words, if I just replace x1, then I have 10 2 of pi over 9 plus 10 2 of 4 pi over 9 plus 10 2 of 7 pi over 9 is equal to 3. 33. Beautiful, guys. All right.
So we did it. We proved this tricky, tough trigonometric identity step by step. And I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please hit the like button and share your thoughts with me in the comments below. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, consider doing so to join our community of math lovers and stay updated on all my latest videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.